And here with answers to your medical questions in our Ask the Doc segment is Dr. Masante Levine. So as far as kids go, what do parents need to do? I don't, I've, I don't have any kids of my own and I don't do pediatrics, but just talking with other family members and mothers and fathers, it's all about the routine, uh, going to bed at the same time every night. We say the same thing for adults actually. Uh, that is really the best thing to do. Making sure they don't have any medical problems that might be causing the insomnia as well, like in the adult population. Uh, some of the beverages that we consume a lot in America with all the caffeine, the sugar, can certainly cause insomnia and hyperactivity, so trying to eliminate that as well. But I think the big thing is just routine. Every night, same time, uh, trying to make sure they're not up looking at all the TV shows, playing the computer games. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best rule of thumb at this so point. It's calming activities. It's the reading and the soothing things. Yeah, absolutely. They're probably not in most households. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's something that uh, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we do live here in America, and it's you know the 2000s. So, uh, but I think that the routine is the big issue. Families are so disjointed. Uh, mm -hmm. Families stay up a lot more at nighttime. Some of the routine has been impacted as a result of that and uh, the kids are not sleeping and can and create problems with emotional issues uh, later on so try to get to sleep it's very important we don't think about insomnia as bad for your health but it really is it so really try to prioritize is. that all right we've got lots of medical questions let's get to our viewers questions this person asked what can help arthritis pills don't fix it I can't afford a chiropractor every time I need one is there anything else the injections make it not hurt but leave me too tired to enjoy being pain free what gives well there are some treatable forms of arthritis most people have joint pain stiffness and swelling rheumatoid arthritis uh, gout uh, lupus those are some very severe forms of arthritis typically over the kind of medicines don't work so the symptoms persist so you might need steroids might need these strong medications that have been marketed like Humira to help with that. Certainly get to your doctor, get a full blood panel and see if you're a candidate for these medications. Okay, another question. Below my knee, my leg swells. I wore a compression hose for a long time, but no change. What do I do now? We answer this question a lot. It has a lot to do with venous insufficiency a lot of times. A lot of people are overweight, sedentary, have a lot of medical problems like renal failure, heart failure on antihypertensives, which can cause swelling of the legs. This is a chronic condition, basically. So stockings is what we try first. Keep your legs elevated. Uh, there is a procedure that can be done called endovascular ablation, which basically uses laser therapy to uh, destroy the vessels that don't work very well. It can be a chronic problem, but it can be managed very well. Okay, this person says, how can I control my anxiety and panic attacks? Most of the time, there's such a strong emotion. Medications is really the big thing. Maybe avoidance behavior. If you know there's some situations that provoke that anxiety, probably medications would be the best thing for a patient. Okay, and who do they go to for that? Is that their general practitioner? Yeah, I think you can try your PCP first. Certainly, if it's a severe form or it doesn't respond initially to medication, you can try a psychiatrist. Okay, can a panic attack mimic seizure symptoms? such as the drawing up of hands and feet and a person hardly breathes. And if so, what do you do when they are in this state? A lot of times, uh, I don't think they uh, look the same. Certainly a seizure is a more serious issue. Anxiety can mimic some uh, other medical problems, but I don't think they're the same. Uh, certainly if you're concerned, call 911 and get them to the emergency department. Most of the time seizures will go away on their own, but they can injure themselves. So it's a lot of times best that they see someone that is more experienced with this condition. Okay, what's your opinion on getting a second x-ray on an ankle injury? Could the first one not show a hairline fracture? Certainly if you have continual symptoms, uh, yeah, I think a, a repeat x-ray is good because sometimes we do find that fracture that we didn't see initially. So if the physician is recommending, I certainly would get it. All right, we've got lots of other questions, so we'll get to those in just yes, a minute. Don't go away. Dr. Levine will answer more of your questions next on Live at 5. We're back with Dr. Masante Levine to answer more of your medical questions. This person asks, if you have no symptoms but a bacterial infection, a UTI, do you still need 10 days of antibiotics? I think if you have symptoms, 7 to 10 days is kind of the average. Sometimes we do 5 if you've had recurring infections or you have a lot of symptoms like fever, a lot of blood in the urine, throwing up. I think the longer duration is better for the patient. Okay. What would cause excess saliva during sleep? Not quite sure. Sometimes uh, medications can do funny things. Uh, sometimes patients have chronic lung disease that can cause that, acid reflux. Uh, sometimes if you have heart failure, that can get fluid in the lungs and uh, you're coughing at nighttime. So certainly get to your doctor and get a checkup. 
A 50-year-old female out of the blue has extreme pain in the back of her head when she moves it up and down all the way to her neck. What could it be? It sounds like cervical arthritis or degenerative joint disease of the spine. Very mm. common problem here in America. Smokers tend to have more problems with that. Uh, you certainly can start off with some anti-inflammatory medicines such as Motrin, Advil, or Aleve. Some topical medicines such as Voltaren Gel. Uh, if it progresses, you might need an MRI and some injections. Okay. A uh, 57-year-old woman uh, has a childhood mole that has blistered. It's developed a white scab. Two days later, it returned to normal. Anything that she needs to be worried about? You know, we have to look at that. I think everyone's always concerned about malignancy. Certainly, mm -hmm. cancer doesn't get better. Uh, so it sounds like it's a benign recurring uh, issue. Sometimes a biopsy is very helpful or topical steroid cream. Just get to the doctor when you have the rash so they can take a good look at it. Okay, a 55-year-old woman why would her eyes get sleepy? She had a brain aneurysm three years ago, but she's not sleepy, but her eyes want to go to sleep. Yeah, maybe she's having some issues with the muscles of her eyelid. Uh, you know, aneurysm can certainly cause brain damage. Uh, just be interesting to see how much happened during that time. Certainly get to your physician, maybe need another scan, could have another aneurysm. Uh, certainly can always check with your eye doctors, make sure everything is okay with your eyeball. Uh, so certainly sounds like something needs to be checked out. A 57-year-old man can see the pulse in his left leg and the thigh. It just happens occasionally, daily. What could it be? Uh, I mean, I think that sounds okay. It doesn't sound like anything alarming. A lot of us are overweight. We can really can't see the veins in our legs at all. So <laughs> he's lucky. <laughs> maybe he's a thin guy and he can just see it. I mean, it's kind of a normal thing. As long as it's not painful, getting red or uh, larger, I really wouldn't be too concerned about it. A 57-year-old woman has lost a lot of weight. She's developed hemorrhoids. She is eating properly. Besides surgery, what else can she do to ease the pain? Uh, weight loss would be good. Uh, having a high-fiber diet because that helps the bowels move, soft stool. Uh, there's some prescription topical medicines such as Anusol HC suppositories that work really well for that. Most people are actually not treated with surgery. They're treated medically and conservatively, so uh, not necessarily you don't have to get surgery. Good. A uh, 52-year-old woman was awakened by a headache and an extreme runny nose. What could be the cause? Could be the development of a viral infection. Uh, certainly that can a lot of times be treated conservatively without medications, but Tamiflu is sometimes used, especially if it's within 48 hours of onset of symptoms. She can try Tylenol for the headache and maybe a nose spray for her nose and certainly get to a doctor if her symptoms worsen. All right, Dr. Levine, as always, we appreciate you stopping yes, by. We've run out of time, even though we have more questions, but we'll get to Love those em. next Monday. Yes, and you can always visit our website and see the answers to these and other medical questions posted online. And if you'd like to have Dr. Levine answer your medical question, you can always mail us at the address listed on your screen, faxes 892-7305. Email us at laf at kftm.com or post those questions questions every Monday on our KFTM 